as the minister would have indicated, we aren't doing this alone. I know that a lot of concerns, even being here this afternoon, have come up with in, in terms of the, the budget amount that has been given and so on, but we are doing this collaboratively, collaboratively with the Ministry of Tourism, with the Ministry of Community Development, Culture and the Arts. We're doing it with the City of Port of Spain. We are not working in a silo anymore. We are joining together to ensure that this music industry becomes successful. Further to that, we are also joining and partnering with the Trinidad Hotels, Restaurants and Tourism Association and as a result of that partnership, we've been able to engage over 25 of these venues already. The concept is that there are so many bustling venues and places that already have quite a bit of patronage within the city of Port of Spain. We have met with them, we've chatted with them, we've actually gone through full details about their technical capabilities, their current and primary uses of these spaces that they have, the, um, whether or not they've even done live music before, and what would be the suitability that would be perfect for them, everything from unplugged sessions and track artists straight through to full live music bands. We've done this with our expert song engineer, Mr. Marlon Jackson, who's working alongside us in this project in order to make sure that it's a, it's a success. What we have found so far is that 95% of these venues have expressed an immediate willingness to coming on board and having live music present in their venues. You know, they are all enthusiastic about this. You know, and this is just the start. You know, they want to be a part. So we're beginning with a three-month pilot, which will begin from March 1st next year, suitably done two weeks after Carnival to, to respect the post-Carnival events that do take place and to also be in time for the crossover because Soka, Calypso, Chutney, they all have a great place in our live music industry during the Carnival season. But the complaint has been for the other genres of music which do not get the exposure that they need, the performance opportunities in order to gain revenue and make this more sustainable for the very talented artists who are performing. So they will be engaged. We are going to be on the, the end of the side visits, have a stakeholder engagement with all of the venues that have agreed to come on board and agree on the perfect business model moving forward. They've agreed to invest into this, to be a part of this, to promote it. And we will not just be given opportunities for them, but live music districts throughout the world have, been, have become, in a sense, business improvement districts. They allow more jobs for people, a greater amount of nightlife to happen. They allow event planners and coordinators to partner with these venues in order to throw the live events. So it ends up being quite a bustling business hub as a result, which can also bring a lot of influx into our economy in that entertainment hub itself. You know, so this would be the live music district due to launch on March 1st next year.